What's up YouTube and welcome back for part 17 of the STI build. I'm going to be installing gauges in, into the car today. Uh, the actual installation of the gauges, probably the majority of the wiring and probably testing them with the battery just to make sure everything lights up the way it should. Uh, that includes a wide band gauge, the boost gauge and an oil pressure gauge. Um, but first before that I need just a little bit of an update. Uh, my channel's a by the time that we're, you know, you guys are watching this, uh, so I, I would expect while I'm filming or editing, I'm, my channel's going to hit a hundred thousand views. Thinking back to Jan the midpoint of January or late January, when I was trying to still accumulate more hours, more subscribers, because uh, YouTube changed their their policy, and uh, at the time I think I had like thirty six hundred hours and now I'm about 7,000 hours of view time. So the watch time I knew wasn't gonna be an issue and I won't, you know, it's gonna be probably another month and I'll double what the actual requirement is. So the subscriber base keeps on climbing and uh, I think right now we're at 837, so uh, doing a really good job. That's what, 163 people left to get to 1K. So yeah, I'd just like to say again, I'm, I'm really appreciating everyone that's uh, watching the videos and hitting that subscribe button. It's awesome. On another note, over this past while, I've noticed my, my the screen door, the storm door to my, to my front door of my house actually being broken. And uh, I figured out what was going on. It's, it's actually the guy dropping off packages for me. I order a lot of stuff online, whether it's car parts or just regular stuff. And... Uh, so this guy's been almost pulling the whole door right off the hinges and uh, I was home at the time that it happened so uh, I kind of got that straightened out but apart from that I, I didn't realize how easy it was for me to get a P.O. box so Homebrew Subaru now has a P.O. box you'll be able to send me whatever you want fan mail, stickers, whatever it is uh, I'll do special episodes hopefully little short episodes that I can kind of go over things that people might have sent me or uh, you know send me your projects pictures of your car whatever it is so check for the PO box address down in the description it is a little bit long because it's you know it's a strange PO box in Canada I guess I'm not quite sure but uh, I'll leave that in the description and then at the end of the episode I'll probably put it up on the screen just just to remind you I was over on Junk Miata's uh, live stream let's wait for whoever liked it they're the first one to join you got a comment, dude. Got a comment, dude. <laughs> Three likes, no comments. There we go, we got one. Homebrew Subaru says he's in, and since you're the first one to comment that I read off the top of the list, you win a slap, my guy. Even though you've won one in the past, you now have one for your box that people can see. I guess I was one of the first persons to make a comment on the live stream and he was giving away a lot of stickers that night but bang I, I actually won the first one available and so this is the the livery from from the actual little Miata that could that Haggard actually designed originally and so he's got his FYO's made uh, FYO stickers has actually made the forum and it's very similar to what they had on the old one but this one is much nicer and I can't wait to put it on the box I'm not going to do that now, but I'll probably post a pic on, on uh, Instagram. So, And then he also threw in uh, this little free Rick sticker where you know Rick's just finished burping and got some stuff on his face. So I probably won't put this one on that box because I want to kind of leave that one more for like, uh, you know, social media and, and just YouTube channels and stuff. But this one I'll probably put on the first box somewhere. So I've got the gauges, the A-pillar all pulled out. This box we previously opened because it's the oil pressure and I had the harness out of this one. We also checked the lighting on the, uh, the actual gauge with the battery. 
So I'm going to have to attach this harness to uh, vehicle power and of course up to the original harness that's going all over to the oil pressure sender. The same type of thing with uh, the boost gauge which also sends uh, an electronic signal so we hook up a, a, pr a pressure switch that will sit on the uh, or pressure sender I should say to sit on the, the boost line and then uh, wiring comes from the sensor all the way up to the gauge and the wideband gauge obviously uses a wideband O2 sensor uh, Bosch O2 sensors included so we've got to put that into the downpipe and then route the wiring all the way up to the A pillar so I've kind of uh, I've got an idea how which gauges are going where uh, but I haven't actually confirmed with Tyler yet and I'm just waiting here back from him so I'm probably going to start installing them though the way that I would have them and I'm thinking uh, wideband boost oil pressure so that's why I'll kind of temporarily set them up and if I've got to change it afterwards I will okay so I kind of pulled through the, the wiring for the oil pressure uh, gauge and I have the gauge sitting in place I start to realize that uh, the factory bracketing for the gauges is, is just not going to work in this gauge pillar so I'm just going to take out the other gauges and set them in their uh, in their pods as well and then kind of define which which harness is what and then uh, start running some wiring through the car and actually this one's a lot more snug and uh, probably don't need anything on there to actually keep it in there and fastened which is kind of nice the less I have to deal with the better take note that the wiring harnesses are the exact same colors so you'll have to you know make sure you're coming which wiring harness is coming out of which hole and that you attach to the right one obviously so I'm just noticing the uh, wide band comes with a bunch of extra harnesses and uh, I can see where this one goes but I've got no instructions awesome see I'm gonna have to jump online look for a uh, instruction manual P PDF file and then I'll know which harness actually plugs into the back here I realize a smaller one probably plugs in the top but there's two harnesses that'll actually plug into this one so okay so I got all three gauges in the wideband actually only uses this one major main transfer cable yes it's color coded differently on either end so on the other end the yellow wires over on the right and the black wires on this side so everything's reversed but because it's just a transfer cable wiring color doesn't really matter the pin layout does and so this is the little control box and obviously the gauge will plug into this little port that says gauge on it uh, then I've come to realize this little three wire is actually for an analog output so you can have a narrow band gauge hooked up to this little uh, controller and so if you you could plug that into there wire this up to your narrow band and it would actually show you what the reading was as well for air fuel um, this other wire is the main power and ground and I guess lighting control and then the actual O2 harness so the, the wideband sensor will go into the exhaust and it'll have a good length of harness coming off of it but this one attaches to that and then also gives you enough length to come into the car and plug the actual wideband sensor into the control box so I think we're going underneath the hood next to start uh, doing everything that needs to be done under the hood and then routing everything in, into the car so that I can prepare to wire everything up to the gauge to the, you know the gauges in the A pillar area because I think I'm coming in on the right hand side of the car and I gotta go over to the driver's side so let's try that next so I've already uh, taken the oil pressure sender wiring, kind of routed it up along the firewall, along with the brake lines, and I don't have a lot of wire left, but it's certainly going to drop into the car, and I'll be able to extend the wiring up to the gauge inside the car. Uh, so I'm ready to pull the bung out of the downpipe and install the O2 sensor. I was going to thread in the sensor, but I, I, I'm starting to suspect that it needs to be calibrated in atmospheric and not while it's in the downpipe. Uh, so I'm probably best 
finding the instructions next, going over it and determining whether I can thread this into place or not. Uh, it does come with a lot of extra wiring so I can kind of just maybe uh, coil it up in behind the brake lines and uh, connect it out here and then put the wire extension through. So apparently you can calibrate the unit with the O2 sensor or the Y-band in place. Uh, so I am going to thread it into the downpipe. And because they give you so much extra wiring for the wideband, I can make the connection out here. I don't have to try and stuff this large connector through the, the, through the grommet and the firewall. So first I'm going to take the harness for the uh, oil pressure sender and I'll stick it through this grommet that the hole was put previously. Probably going to come through with the battery wiring through this hole as well. And then uh, I can stick through this harness for the wideband. So I've taken the O2 harness, kind of uh, folded it over itself, zipped it all together, and I'm just going to zip it up and behind the brake lines here to kind of tuck it out of the way. And then I'll just uh, go ahead and plug the O2 into the harness. And then just kind of push the wiring in to where it should be, kind of push the connector off to the side. And I might add another little zip tie off there just to hold it out of the way. But the oil pressure sender and the wideband wiring are in the car. I just got to do the boost sensor next. Now from what I can tell, what they wanted people to use is uh, this clear cheap hose. Uh, this stuff loves to melt, does not handle heat at all. I highly recommend you don't use it. Uh, something else I've noticed is, of course, the, they supplied the T so that you can you can T into the boost line and actually get a reference. But I, I don't know how that little hose is supposed to go onto the T without like extreme force, and uh, you know, it's just not designed for it. I, I, I'm hard to believe that you buy that quality gauge and they give you this. So my idea is to keep the the amount of hose very short, keep the sensor underneath the hood and extend the wiring. Uh, I think it's going to get a much better uh, reference and response time for the gauge if if the, uh, the boost reference line is very short. Uh, it's better off we send it electrically as opposed to vacuum going all the way inside the car. And fortunately for Tyler, I looked through my toolbox and I have a little length of really high quality silicone hose. I don't need very much of it. It's just going to be a very short length, uh, but much better than what uh, they supplied. So I've gone ahead and made up what I basically needed. I need this T to go in on, on the boost line so the, the boost reference will get cut and then teed into this line. A uh, little air filter to protect the boost sensor, but the boost reference will come right through there. Tell the sensor what boost is, we'll send it electrically to the gauge. So I'm going to have to do a lot of wire extending. And I've kind of left this the way it is just because I'm not exactly sure where it's going to be fastened to or routed yet. So I'm just going to leave it sitting on top of the intake manifold and deal more so with the wiring and the gauges at this point. I've just gone ahead and ended up making up a harness for the boost sensor. Uh, just two small wires. I mean, I don't have a spool of 20 gauge or 22 gauge wire, whatever it is. So I just had the splice together a bunch of wiring, solder it all along. I've got two wires and a harness uh, that is soldered directly to the sensor. So the sensor, I'm not sure exactly where it's going to sit yet, but it's somewhere going to be somewhere up top here. And the sensor needs a ground, so I left this one wire out for a ground that I'm probably going to put an eyelet and put it on a one of these bolt heads somewhere. And then the other two wires is one's for 12 volt accessory and the other is the signal wire. So I just have this small harness kind of routed through here, going through the firewall at the back. All the wiring's in the vehicle. Uh, so now I can basically come over to the A-pillar. So I'm gonna pop the A-pillar. And of course there's probably curtain, a curtain in behind this. I don't know if that's gonna affect anything or not. 
but then the wiring coming down through on the floor needs to kind of go in behind the center console over to this side I'll probably take off this uh, knee bolster panel hopefully it comes off relatively easy and start dropping the wire down in behind here and making most of my connections and then fastening everything up in place in behind the driver's knee bolster. So now that we're inside the car I've already taken the wiring for the oil pressure sender and extended it as long as it should need to be. Um, all the wiring's now on the driver's floor. It's There's a nice little uh, area probably about that large that you can scoop wiring right in behind the center console. So now I'm ready to take down the A-pillar and at least see how the wiring is going to kind of drape down through here so that I, it, it can all be attached because there is quite a few wires that I'm going to need to solder. So you just need a pick and I'm guessing a 10 millimeter. Pop this little uh, cover off that says SRS airbag and then it is a 10. Always be careful of swinging your ratchet near the windshield. And then just a little tug. There's another clip that's down here and a soft pull back and the, the whole A-pillar will come right off. I'm just gonna put this in the back seat for now. So I've got the A-pillar in my hand, or the gauge pillar. I'm just gonna try and route the wiring a little bit high mounted on it. And really most of the wiring is is kind of down past already the most of the curtain anyway so I don't really have to worry about it too much but I just want to make sure that all this is going to mount in there with that curtain in there and there's a there's a good first look at how, what it's going to be like uh, it, it looks really neat the uh, now it's kind of hard to tell what my driving position is because the car is still up on jack stands, but that looks pretty good right there. So I think that's how it's going to be pretty much in there. So I've just got to kind of figure out the wiring after this, solder all the connections, get some power on ground going to them, make sure that the lighting's all going to be right because you can light these red or blue and Tyler wants them all lit, lit up red. so. I just got to confirm all that, plug everything in, and then test them just to make sure they look right. Here I am just about to get started, and I found what I absolutely hate seeing. I don't know if this is something Tyler did or someone previous, but this is the type of thing that will burn your car to the ground. Uh, I've seen it numerous times and um, you know just knowing that it's it's been sitting in my garage this long something like that I mean there's no battery in the car I don't have to worry about it but in the case that it was you know it was hooked up that type of thing you know when you're doing it you don't realize that you're playing with fire but um, resistance and bad connections like that create a lot of heat they start melting the insulate the plastic insulation off the wire that cause bad shorts elsewhere that you're not aware of you start to get a little faint smell every once in a while and then all of a sudden you your car's on fire and and you don't you know it's going so fast that you don't know how to stop it and you just watch it burn on the side of the road I, I've seen it happen and uh, I've, I've seen a lot of cars towed in that were just just chunks of metal you know uh, so if you don't know what you're doing or you don't have the proper supplies to actually make proper electrical connections just be very wise that uh, you are playing with fire so with this panel off you can see there's plenty of room to actually make all the connections and and hide stuff in behind the panel at the same time I'm gonna clean up these uh, bad connections and put everything on a fuse make sure that it's going to be all safe so that nothing bad can happen. Now I've had to do a lot of wiring here. Uh, there's a lot more connections than I was thinking and you got to really pay attention because uh, some of the color codes change within the three gauges 
And of course I've used different color codes coming from the sensors but just because I don't have all the appropriate colored wiring. So the wiring I have here is kind of a mess. They're all open connections right now. Um, but I have tested the gauges and they did come on and work. So I'm going to turn off the light here. And I've got to get, uh, I've got a battery set up out here on the floor and some jumper cables. I have the power side with the, with the fuse already hooked up. So I'm going to attach the ground and we'll see if they work. So I have these two wired for the color red and I'm pretty sure this guy's a multicolor. Um, of course we're not getting an oil pressure reading, we're not getting a boost reading or vacuum reading. Um, so this is pretty good because that means it's kind of detecting atmospheric at this point. Actually no, the ground isn't still hooked up for the boost gauge so maybe that's why it's flashing. But it looks like the wideband's actually given a reading, maybe not. Uh, but it does look like it cycled the heater and then I'm expecting these oh there it is right there red so these change the color so that's the uh, that's the gauges all lit up now uh, there is trim pots in the back of the gauges and you want to make sure you leave your wiring long enough so that you can pull the gauges out to use this little adjusting tool that they give you and you stick it in the back of the gauge and then you can turn it and apparently you can you can dim or brighten the gauges um, so right off the hop the wideband does look a little bit brighter than the other two the other two look the same and I don't know if it's just because it's got more of it actually lit right now but it does appear a little bit brighter to me probably on camera you'll probably see that it is brighter too so what I've really got to do now is just solder all my connections, make sure they're well insulated, well routed, put all the panels back. Uh, I've actually got to leave my ignition source open and not wired because I don't have a battery in the car and I'm not sure which wire is ignition. I don't want to take the time to look it up on, uh, on my wiring schematics. So uh, when I have a battery in the car I can just back probe some connectors until I find the ignition source and then find, leave that last wire in so that when the first startup happens with the car all the gauges should work. That completes the install. I've got all the wiring set in behind very nice, uh, fastened really well, zip tied and electrical tape where it needs to be. Uh, all the panels are put back in. So uh, before we go to crank the key I'll have to hook up ignition power, figure out where ignition power is and hook that up because I do I do want the oil pressure gauge fully operational for startup, so I've got I've to ensure that, that that is wired before we turn the key. So getting a lot closer to the finish now. Uh, the next video is actually going to be a battery relocate. Um, it's not going to sit in the factory location, we're going to put it in the trunk. I know I've already done a video on a battery relocate, but uh, it's going to be done, done a little differently in this car. Um, I do plan on putting a junction box. and. Uh, I'll just have to figure out how I'm going to distribute the ground. And uh, other than that, there's a lot of stuff to actually go over and clean up. The waste, the external wastegate still needs to be installed with the down tube for that. And uh, a bunch of the emission stuff. So I really have to kind of plan out how I'm going to route all the emissions. And I'll probably put all of that into one video. And then I'm pretty sure the startup video will come up after that. So. You definitely want to stay tuned. Um, car's not very far from actually uh, turning over and driving. So, so like I mentioned in the start of the video, I'm going to leave my PO box address here. I'll also leave it down in the description, and I'll always try and remember to add it to the descriptions. I may forget. Uh, send me whatever you like. Uh, try not to send me dick pics. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below, and I'll see you in the next one.